Has anybody else just had some weird notification come up on their screen? Oh, tell us about your experience. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. gone now. It's gone now. I wonder which experience they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I ignored it, I'm afraid. Oh, the wonders of technology, eh? Yeah. Just finding the papers. We've got a town council meeting at seven, Julie, but we should be finished by then, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, I know you have, yeah. I might, I was thinking about attending, but I might not actually, because I, I haven't, I still There's got not tea. There's not a lot on the agenda, don't worry. No, I saw the agenda, yeah. I might do the next one if I can. <clears throat> I'm just looking at, looking at a squirrel up, up the tree. <laughs> uh. Got a minute to go, I think, Lisa. Yeah, just one more minute. Who are we missing, Lisa? I know just, not, not I'm just trying to look at pictures now and see. No, that's what I'm doing. What I'm doing. I think we're missing Councillor Behan, Councillor Chan, Councillor Died. And Councillor Whitehead? And Councillor Whitehead, yeah, unless yeah. I'm missing somebody. No, I can't see any of them, those either. There's Councillor Whitehead. Oh, yes. Hi, Richard. Hi. Hi, Judy. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hey. It's unusual for Kwai to be late. Yeah, I'm Mark. It's eight o'clock. Is there anybody trying to get in, do you know, Lisa? No, can't see anybody. Shall we make a start then? As it's, I make it eight o'clock, do you make six o'clock? Six o'clock. <laughs> 1800 hours, that's not a good start, is it? I'm two hours late. <laughs> Shall we make a start? Lisa, you happy to make a start? Yes, Chair. Okay, all right. So, apologies for absence. Chair, we have apologies from Councillor McVeigh. Yeah, okay. And have we got declar any declarations of interest this evening? Anybody got declaration of interest? Put your hands up if you have. Can't see anybody. No, can't see anybody, Lisa. No, Chair. Okay, good, okay. Confirmation of previous minutes, um, unless anybody's got any amendments that they want to uh, shout out about, put the hand up, please. If not, we'll take the minutes as a true record and I'll ask for a show of hands. So I'll just go through everybody and see if anybody's got a hand up to indicate they want to speak. No, I can't see anybody. Okay, so... Um, could you put your hands up then uh, to show that you're in agreement with the minutes as uh, they were set out? Yeah, okay, that's fine, thank you. We'll accept them as a true record. So Chairman's announcements, my usual, my new, usual reminders. Can I ask you to mute yourself when you're not speaking and to try to remember to unmute yourself when you do want to speak? which is what I usually don't do. And could I remind you to keep your cameras on, please, throughout the meeting? And um, I won't accept a photograph because I do need to see that you are in the room and taking part in the, in the debate. Thank you. We're joined this evening by two members of the public for item five, but I'll introduce them when they, uh, when they arrive and welcome them. And in terms of officers, we have Duncan Rudge, Planning Services Manager, Kieran Pratt Power, Area Planning Officer, Simon Rolls, Senior Planning Officer. We're joined by Simon Smith, Economic Development Manager. 
we've got Penny James, Solicitor, Lisa Perks, Democratic Services, and we're also joined this evening by Karen Hanchett from Wushia Highways. Welcome, Karen, and thank you for giving up your time for being here this evening. And obviously, Karen's here for item five. Um, could I remind you that if you wish to speak, uh, please put your hand up and, and wave so that myself or Lisa can see you. And another reminder that uh, Penny will ask you to uh, vote uh, in alphabetical order. So uh, you'll have to shout out uh, when your name comes up. So very quickly, I'll move on to item five, which is the Willow Park application. And could I ask Simon, please, to present the report? Yeah, thank Kieran, you. Kieran's in charge of the IT. <laughs> thank you, Kieran. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, okay, uh, this, this presentation is predominantly going to run through the proposal. Uh, the merits of the application are dealt with in the officer report. Um, the case of the proposal is for a new headquarters for a company known as ZX LIDARS, including 4,985 square metres of uh, research and development and production facilities as well as associated landscaping and park, car, car parking areas. Uh, in terms of the business, ZX Liders is a, a high-tech business involved in the research and development of wind measurement tools with applications in wind farm development and other weather monitoring activities. If we could move on to the next slide. Okay, so th this site lies at Willow End Park, which is an existing business park uh, approximately four and a half kilometres southeast of Great Malvern Town Centre. So, um, yeah, Kieran is just highlighting the the um, existing business park. The yellow area um, is obviously the application site. Uh, you've got a blow up of that on the left hand side of the slide in marked in red. Um, access would be achieved off um, Blackmore Park Road. Uh, so there is an ex existing access in that position. Um, Hanley Swan uh, lies to the east, as you can see on the map on the right. Um, in terms of the closest residential property, um, if we can just highlight the area on the left here, uh, this, that's, that's known as Vida, Vida Glenta. Um, in terms of the marking you can see along this route here, uh, to the south western boundary that's a dismantled railway line part of which forms a local wildlife site um, just to touch on other surrounding features on the map on the right uh, the three counties showground is obviously um, just across the, the crossroads here to the northwest and finally one constraint or a very important constraint is the Malvern Hills area of outstanding natural beauty boundary which runs on the opposite side of Blackmore Park Road. So it comes up almost to the, to the site access. But the site does in fact fall outside of the, the designated boundary. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, in terms of the site plan, I'll, I'll just run through some of the, the key features. Um, in terms of the, the building that's proposed, you'll see that runs on a broadly east-west axis. Uh, that is a deliberate design intention in terms of trying to minimise impact on views from the Malvern Hills. Um, you'll see within the building you've got areas of green green roofs. Um, you've also got uh, dark metal cladding, uh, probably dark grey anthracite coloured cladding, as well as um, solar panels on these southern facing roof slopes. Um, in terms of car parking, you'll see that that's been split up um, into sort of three Three or four areas really. Um, you've got tree planting interspersed within that to try and break up the visual impact of it. Um, I think a key point to stress is that this site incorporates 40% green infrastructure, um, which is touched upon in the report in terms of um, that's going beyond our current policy requirements. Um, bottom corner, there is a suds and wildlife pond to manage with to manage surface water. Um, I should point out there is a public right of way along the red hashed line along the bottom here, um, which would be protected uh, of an appropriate width. There are some allotments proposed for staff um, on this sort of western site boundary. 
Um, in terms of new planting, there's planting along this western site boundary, the northeastern corner, and also to the, also to the northern boundaries. Um, there is further planting, but I think those are the, the sort of, in terms of views from the hills, those are perhaps the most important areas. Um, in terms of the amount of car parking, about 120 car parking spaces in total, that makes provision for accessible spaces. There's pr provision for electric vehicle charging points and for cycle parking as well um, up in this north northwestern corner. Uh, if we can move on to the aerial photo, please. Okay, not too much to say here that you haven't already seen. Um, uh, sorry, the, the site area isn't highlighted, but it's it's it's. Um, if Kieran can just uh, run around it, yeah, it's it's no that that's. It's this area here, um, just to the south of the existing business park. Uh, the railway line runs along this south. Uh, Western boundary, and there is a uh, Blackmore Park Road along this route along along here, and then an equestrian centre to the north, um, and a bridleway which runs along this route across across Blackmore Park Road. Okay, the next slide, please. Okay, apologies for the quality of the plan. It's, it's hard to get the detail shown on the slide, but um, I'll just run through the key sort of improvements that we've made to the existing access onto Blackmore Park Road. Uh, you've got 10 metre entry and exit radii, which would be formed. Um, improvements to surfacing and the tie into the public highway, so you'd have a blacktop surface. Um, there's centre line markings and, and a you know, more formal T junction arrangement. Um, Importantly, there is a sort of a, a Y sort of access at the minute, which allows for access to the residential property I've mentioned at Vida Glenta. That access would be moved slightly further up the, the private access road, so, you, so it would be formed into a more safe arrangement. Um, there's finally, there is a, a two metre footway, which would run along the northern side of that access road. And then in the bottom part of the slide, it just shows you how that would tie into the um, the actual site itself. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I, I should say we have got a, a slide at the end of the presentation, which which help, will help you visualise this. Um, it is clearly a, a fairly linear building in terms of um, its arrangement, so you may not be able to glean too much from 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 these. Um, other than the fact that the, the there is a mixed palette of materials, um, timber cladding vertically arranged. Um, dark profiled metal cladding, both to walls and to the to the roof. Um, I've already mentioned the the green roofed areas as well, which would be subject to conditional control in terms of the the planting there. Um, finally, there is a, an entrance feature at the north um, western end, um, which would sort of draw the eye and um, attract any visitors to to the site. Okay, if we can move on to the next slide, please. Uh, I'll just run through quickly that the floor areas, there's not too much to say. Um, this is this um, sort of entrance feature that I talked about. So you have a, a reception area. Um, so, so this top area here, you then have a canteen on the far side for staff um, to, in the effort to try and minimize um, the need to go off site at lunch times. Um, you've got goods in and out areas. Um, production offices, production workshops. Um, if we move on to the next slide, that's a continuation of, of the linear building. So that, that's purely laid to um, production workshop use and um, further goods in and out points. Uh, if we can move to the next slide. In terms of the first floor, um, that's more limited. Uh, you've got uh, a sort of central multi-purpose breakout spaces for research and development, su supply chain and sales functions. Um, you've got offices and meeting rooms. Um, and if we can go on to the next slide, please. Okay. Uh, again, apologies for the quality of the slide, but it's, it's a very detailed drawing. Um, the key things to stress, I guess, are that the, the strategy has been accepted by the local Lee Flood Authority. Um, 
incorporates a, an attenuation pond in the southern corner of the site, um, which would be subject to detailed design. Uh, an allowance has been made for climate change and it's allowing for a storm up to a one in 100 year duration uh, without fall limited to that rate to the Mere Brook to the south. Um, a foul treatment plant would be um, positioned in the area to the south of the proposed building. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so that's just a, a section of the uh, attenuation pond. Uh, you can see the, the sort of varying gradients there, a maximum gradient of one in three. Uh, I believe the maximum depth would be 1.2 meters. Um, as recommended, there's a condition which would control that the precise details of the of the planting, uh, which would be of aquatic uh, type. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, external lighting. Um, this is subject to a condition as recommended. So there are some officer concerns in, in respect of the, the proposal that's shown on this plan. Um, you'll see there's, there's different types of lighting. So you have sort of luminaires, which are fi fixed to the building themselves, uh, as well as a lot of uh, three or four meter tall lighting columns around the car parking areas and external areas. There are a limited number of low level bollards and that is direct, the direction that we'd like to see uh, as officers uh, in terms of amendments to this plan under a condition. Um, the, the management plan for the AOMB sort of um, has a, a, an objective to maintain dark skies and clearly this is within the setting of the AOMB. Um, existing business park is, is, is not lit so therefore um, we would like to see amendments to that as part of a condition. If we can go on to the next slide, please. Okay, just to, just to briefly run through the photos, top left, you've got the entrance onto Blackmore Park looking south. Um, top right, you've got the entrance looking north. You see the existing sort of um, concrete um, hard standing, uh, which would be improved as part of the access arrangements. Bottom left, you have the view from the internal access road looking up towards the existing brick um, business park buildings. So you can see the site in the foreground and the same bottom, bottom right, you see a view sort of looking into the site with the trees bounding the far boundary. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, sorry, some of these appear a little bit dark. Um, the top right, uh, is showing a Vida Glenta, which is the existing residential property, um, which lies, um, which I identified earlier. The other slides are really showing you the fact that this site is um, visually enclosed by, by vegetation, so tree-lined hedgerows. Um, this bottom right slide, uh, sorry, photo is showing the view from the far corner of the site back towards those brick-built um, existing business park buildings. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are taken from the LVIA that was submitted. Um, I've, I've included them just, just really so that you can reference some of the views from, from the hills, I guess. There's clear views of the hills from the site. Um, some of these are taken from the, the right of way that I've previously mentioned. Um, in terms of impacts, uh, clearly, there's going to be impact on the openness of the site and also on terms of views to and from the, 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 the right of way in the hills. Um, officers have, have, have weighed that in the balance and um, arrived at a, a recommendation for approval subject to conditions and subject to the completion of a Section 106 agreement. Um, I should say that within the, the report, um, there appears to be a duplication of the conditions. Um, this seems to have happened in the formatting by the support team. So apologies about that. So please disregard the second set of conditions. If you just go on to the next slide, please. Okay, so this is one I can hopefully leave the presentation on for any debate. Um, happy to answer any questions as they arise. Thank you, Chair. Um, Simon, my power was just about to go, so I've just had to turn the switch on. Um, just before um, Lisa lets in our two external speakers, just to update on the apologies for absence, we did receive an apology from Councillor Behan. 
So if you could note that, Lisa, please. That's great. And would you um, mind letting in our external, first external speaker, I believe, is Mr. Robert Barnes, who's representing um, the objector, who is the neighbour. Thank you, Lisa. Through now, Chair. Thank you. Actually, Kieran, Simon, do you want to um, stop the screen sharing? I'm just thinking. Thank you. Okay, we can see Mr. Barnes now. Can you can you hear us? I can hear you. Um... Do you want to count me in, or should I just start when I'm when I'm ready? No, I'll in, I'll introduce you. Oh, okay. So Mr. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Barnes, who's representing Mr. Shale, who is um, the neighbour uh, and who is an objector. And um, I think you know you've got three minutes, um, and I will be quite strict on that. So if you'd like to kick off, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for letting me speak. I'm representing Mr. and Mrs. Shale, who own Vida Glenta a house immediately adjacent to the site, plus a group of 11 further local residents, all opposed to this application in open countryside, outside and distant from any settlement boundary, and just beyond the AONB. The site has been chosen for its remoteness, beauty and rural setting, to satisfy the occupier's commercial preferences, but not to satisfy planning policy. It is ill-suited for major headquarters development in the middle of the countryside. This is not a case where appropriate development should be frustrated by policy for two reasons. First, your development, development plan allocates land for employment nearby at Blackmore Park. The dismay of local residents and the parish council that their trust in a plan-led system might be betrayed if this allocation is ignored to satisfy a commercial preference is palpable. Second, the plan allows for rural business expansion only where impacts are acceptable and where appropriately scaled. This proposal would double the size of Willow End Park and far more than double the workforce. Allowing this would make a mockery of plan policy on appropriateness of scale. There are good planning reasons why controls exist for such rural development. It is entirely inaccessible by public transport. The suggested active travel corridor must not be relied on to support pedestrian and cycle access. It is only at the feasibility stage, has no certainty on delivery, and the proposed route goes through private land, including land owned by Mr and Mrs Shale. There are no local shops, services, or catering for the workforce whatsoever. The 150 workers would rely almost entirely on travel by car, and that is unsustainable. This absence of sustainable transport is compounded by other harms highlighted by the report around visual impact, lighting, loss of tranquility and loss of countryside. This is also not a case where local people have simply sought to oppose any local development. The sentiment is this is the wrong area for large scale headquarters development. But if that must be pursued, an alternative opportunity at the edge of the Mearbrook industrial estate just to the north of the site has been identified in representations. It is supported by the landowner and would involve redevelopment of land where remnants of military use are evident, more distant from houses and the AOMB and with better road access. The jobs could be delivered there. This and all other preferable alternative sites across South Worcestershire have largely been ignored. The applicants themselves identified three tests for assessing employment proposals in open countryside. These related to scale, availability of other sites and planning impact. The scheme fails all three tests. It is too big, in the wrong place and harmful. It should be refused. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Barnes. Um, I'll now move on to uh, our next speaker, who is Mr. John Kirby. Lisa, if you could let uh, Mr. Kirby in, please. Just coming through now, Chair. Thank you.
Hey, Chair, Mr. Kirby's with us. Oh, Good yeah. evening, everybody. Hello, hello, Mr. Kirby. Um, I'll just remind you that you've got three minutes and I will be quite strict um, if you go over that time. So if you'd like to start, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. Or I should say Mr. Kirby is representing the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, thank you for the opportunity of addressing planning committee this evening on behalf of the applicants, ZX LIDARs. The key issue before planning committee this evening is whether the planning application complies with the adopted policies within the SWDP and neighbourhood plan. The creation of new employment opportunities throughout South Worcester is a key objective of the SWDP. In particular, and as is addressed through the officer's report, the this is specifically supported by policies SWDP 8 and 12. In addition, policy MNGR 8 of the Neighbourhood Plan also permits the expansion of existing business parks where it can be demonstrated that the use of land within the current sites is not practical or viable. In this instance, ZX LIDAR have undertaken an extensive search for an alternative location and as required by MNGR 8 have considered all available land at the existing business parks. The applicants have prepared a report into the operational viability and practicality of alternative locations. This concludes that due to the fragmented nature and size of potentially available alternative land parcels, particularly at Blackmore Park, and the position of sites with regards to the ESP production facility and associated issues around paper dust, that none would be either practical or operationally viable for the construction of a high-tech LIDAR-based LIDAR business. The applicant is, however, fully aware that concerns have been raised from the local community and speaker this evening with regard to a range of environmental technical issues. The applicant has sought to address these concerns, and this is an important point that there are no unresolved objections that are unable to be addressed as a result of the imposition of planning conditions. While some concerns have been raised in respect of the location of the site from an accessibility perspective, WCC Highways has raised no objections. In order to address concerns with regard to accessibility, the applicant is agreed to the provision of a financial contribution towards delivery of the active transport corridor. And in addition, uh, whilst a significant number of employees already travel to work by cycle, the firm is committed to run a private shuttle bus to location to suit employees' needs. It is under understood that concern has also been raised by the Council's Landscape Officer in respect of external lighting. In this respect, ZX LIDAR are happy to work with officers subject to a planning condition to ensure lighting is low key in order to protect dark skies and the AOMB. Chair, the proposed development will deliver a significant number of new high quality technology based employment opportunities and associated benefits. The principle of development fully complies with the aspirations for economic growth within South Worcestershire and the proposal to meet the locational requirements and tests through the specific policies. As such, it is specifically requested that the planning application is approved as per the Office of Recommendation this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Could I ask uh, Simon if you want to come back with any clarification or comments, having heard the two speakers? Uh, yes, certainly. In, in terms of the, I suppose, the, the connectivity issue, um, the applicant's agent has, has, has touched upon many of the points that um, I wanted to mention in terms of the, the shuttle bus service that's proposed. Uh, we have recommended a condition to tie that down. Um, that would that would predominantly um, relate to sort of key commute times, um, but it would involve um, staff surveys to to see whether additional services could be provided. Um, uh, in terms of vehicle movements, uh, yes, we've acknowledged within the report um, there will be um, a significant uplift in terms of movements to and from the site, um, but it's it's acceptable within the um, the existing highway network as as demonstrated by the County Council's highway comments. Um, we've already mentioned the fact that there is a, an active travel corridor um, along the old uh, railway line. That's specifically within the local transport plan prepared by the County Council um, and a, a significant contribution of £50,000 would be made towards that, as well as providing two points of connection um, in due course from, from the site and from the site access. Um, a travel plan condition would be uh, imposed, which would require an up-to-date 
plans be maintained by the company um, and other conditions as recommended by the highway authority. Um, overall, um, officers consider the, the accessibility to be um, acceptable in this case. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. I've just lost my screen for a minute, but um, I'm just logging on to a, another device. So if I could turn to um, the ward members, please. Um, Councillor Allen, I understand that you want to start um, the debate. Thank you. Yes, good, good evening. Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me OK. I'd like to thank the officers for all their hard work preparing this and presenting the case. And I'd like to thank everybody who attended the site visit. I found this very useful in understanding the, the, the layout and I'm really glad so many people went. It was very important to see. This for me is not an easy decision. Building on open countryside is not something that comes naturally to me. Normally I, I, I tend to go against those sort of decisions depending when I've heard the evidence. However, I propose that we accept the officer's recommendation with the additional conditions which I will come to later. These need to be agreed in conjunction with local ward members before the grant of any planning permission. I reserve the right to speak at the end before the vote once I have heard all the members' views and comments. I do have to consider planning law and if we turn down this application today, I have to be realistic about what an appeal with a planning inspector would bring. Effectively, can I refuse permission under the current planning rules we currently have to work with? It is policy compliant with the current SWDP. It has been stated by officers that all other sites in this area have been looked at and are not suitable. The economic growth this will bring is extremely good for our area. We need more jobs. And I note this is a quality employer and a very green company. Initially, it will bring 60 jobs and later 130. Plus, it will also bring employment for other people in our community. The proposed location is not on growing belt land and it is adjacent to an existing business park and there is already access to that business park. I note also that though we are in the middle of an SWDPR uh, that has yet to be approved, this site is located in the, is mentioned in the SWDPR, um, which is out for consultation. And I have to consider the implications of this land being used in the future. Will we get such a green and clean company in the future? I don't think so. This is a very green, sustainable building with biodiversity enhancements around the site. There is an orchard, wildflowers to help out under pressure bees and insects, a pond which we know will encourage wildlife. And I'm also delighted to see allotments. It is a shame that more companies do not follow this applicant's example. There is a commitment for Hanley Castle High School children to be given work placements. This is very important to help tackle climate change. We need the young to be given the chance to live and work locally and not to be forced to travel miles each day to reach their place of employment. I note that the company are going to put funds into active travel corridors, also walking and cycling maps. I also note that the Malvern Hills AONB statutory consultancy have not asked for this application to be refused. Therefore, as I've already stated, I propose we accept the officer's recommendation subject to the agreement of one, eternal, sorry, external lighting detail to be agreed with ward members, bin store air conditioner substation detail, again, to be agreed with ward members, uh, and number three, the extension of the rear pathway around the orchard to join the lower car park, which is located nearest to the Suds Pond. As I stated, ought to be agreed in conjunction with local war members before the grant of any planning permission. Finally, just to be clear, I do want to speak at the end and let's not put it all at risk now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Allen. 
Um, I'll move on to Councillor Morgan now. Would you like to speak, Andrea? Thank you, Madam Chair. Firstly, I would also like to thank the planning officer and all for the work they've done and the time they've taken on this planning application. The application before us this evening represents long-term investment to both the economy and employment within the Malvern Hills District. Therefore, with the conditions requested being met and approved, I am also minded to second this proposal of acceptance. However, Madam Chair, I also would like to request permission to speak again if, if required. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Um, I'll open up the debate now to members. So if you could put your hands up, please, clearly and wave at us. Mm -hmm. Councillor Lorraine. Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, I must say that I had very mixed feelings about the location of this application. While the application itself is full of green and environmentally positive features, the position is really can only be described as a greenfield open countryside location. And I was therefore surprised and somewhat disappointed about that. It is, however, good to read that a shuttle bus service is planned and there's a significant contribution to the active, Malvern active travel corridors also envisaged. Uh, but I am concerned about the number of vehicle journeys that a development of this scale is likely to promote, a concern that is further amplified by the size of the proposed car parking provision. There's also the reality that Blackmore Park Road is not at all a cyclist friendly road with many vehicles whipping past a lot along the road at high speeds. If only it were possible to revive the course of the old railway line between Upton and Malvern as a dedicated cycle and pedestrian way as has long been talked about. The other key concern I have is about lighting and light pollution in this rural location and I would like there to be a condition that there, any security lighting should be disturbance activated rather than on all night. So in other words, if an animal or a burglar approaches it, the lights come on for a limited period of time. Lighting for lengthy periods of the night is very unkind to bats and other wildlife of course. And I think the exterior lighting generally needs to be minimal in terms of brightness in intensity and with low spill and minimal reflection off hard surfaces like the driveway and the car parks. Indeed, I think low level exterior lighting with bulbs facing downwards and as I say of low wattage would be preferable to the three to four meter high columns uh, that are proposed in the plans. I'd like to think that the choice of this site for such a development was the result of much thorough investigation, that's what's been said, of other sites closer to the built-up area of Malvern, and that it was only chosen because no other sufficiently large sites are available. I'm, I'm sure that is the case, but we'd like to be reassured. So if permission were to be granted, I hope that the company would do all it can to incentivize, encourage and support employees to use that shuttle bus service that's envisaged, ideally an electric powered shuttle bus. And I would certainly not like to learn of the shuttle bus demise after a period of low usage and for the business instead to be generating large numbers of single occupancy car journeys to and from the site. That's my real concern. That said, on that basis of, of what we have before us and what's sort of been said, I guess that I could be persuaded to support the application, even though I consider it to be locationally very much at odds with some of our core planning development policies. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Ray. Um, Councillor Bennett, oh, uh, actually, um, Simon, would you, would you like to come back on any of those points first before I move on to other councillors? I can just I can just mention a couple of points, perhaps um, in, in terms of the sort of identification of land um, in, in the officer report, we do refer to an economic um, development needs study that was carried out in 2018 that did identify a shortfall within the within the district. Um, obviously, we are planning positively under the, the plan review, um, but that is um, as, it, as it stands a couple of years away. Um, 
as we've already identified, the applicant has been through a sequential approach in terms of the looking at um, alternative sites. Um, and, and in terms of the highways impacts, we've, um, we've addressed those through negotiation with the applicant uh, and the county highways department. Um, I should just mention in terms of the conditions we've recommended, condition 10 relates to the shuttle bus service. Um, and that is to be required to be provided pre free of charge um, for all staff. And the measures set out in the approved plan should be carried out and complied for a period for, of no less than five years is, is the condition requirement. Um, in terms of the external lighting, I've already mentioned that the that uh, is currently conditioned, but from an officer perspective, I would be happy to agree that up front um, in conjunction with the local ward members, um, in particular paying particular attention to um, low level lighting, um, minimising lighting generally, and only, only allowing sort of essential lighting. The condition as drafted, number 16, does say that with the exception of any security lighting, all non-essential external lighting should be switched off between the hours of 11 p.m. till dawn, which is in line with the Worcestershire Reg Regulatory Services recommendation. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. That was very helpful. Um, Councillor Bennett. Hi. Um, <clears throat> got a few queries and problems with this, uh, but not necessarily in principle, which is quite surprising for me. Um, basically, there is a, um, a patio on the western elevation of this building, if you look at the drawings quite closely. And I don't understand how that can be so close to the property that is next to the road. And I would suggest that that should be removed um, because there, it doesn't serve any function for the buildings at all. Um, it's glazed, uh, both the patio itself, the, 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 it's on the first floor, by the way. Um, and that seems very, very odd and I would suggest that that needs to be removed. All the elevations on that western elevation are the ones which face the hills and also face the property that is affected, the house at the entrance. Um, I'm surprised that's got through. Um, and they really all need to be, uh, the, 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 there's quite a lot of windows there, they all need to be non-reflective glass and I didn't see a condition about that. I'd also suggest that the wonderful um, living roofs, which I think are great, should cover all of the roofs not affected by solar panelling uh, and that should be made a condition and the solar panelling as the AOMB unit request should be non-reflective that definitely needs to be in there as well um, and some more planting on the western elevation um, tree cover to break up the quite considerable height of those two end gables um, as with views from the hills which is the, the major thing that I'm always concerned about would solve this um, apart from that, I think it's a pretty good, um, it's a pretty good development considering the location and I accept, and I really totally agree with Councillor Lorraine's uh, views on that, but there are, there is a, a far more prominent bit of the business part beyond it and if anything, if this is handled rightly, it might actually obscure some of those uh, a little bit and break it up a bit more um, because you can see them quite clearly from the hills as it is at the moment. Um, so with those provisos, which I would hope perhaps, um, you know, the councillors, uh, the ward councillors might take on board and, 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 and sort out, I'd be, I'd be minded to say provisionally yes. Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Do any of the officers want to come back on any of Councillor Bennett's comments? Simon, Kieran, Duncan? Could I, could I, just, could I just address a couple of those? Um, in terms of the distance to Vida Glenta, should clarify that there is a an intervening paddock um, that might well be within the ownership of Vida Glenta, but the actual residential garden um, is 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 separated by a paddock. In terms of the distances um, from uh, the built part of the development to the, the residential curtilage, that measures sixty five meters. So, in terms of that sort of um, small. Um, roof terrace area on that western aspect, um, you've got a considerable distance which would um, considerably exceed any sort of guidance that we have in terms of intrusive overlooking. Um, in terms of the, the windows on that western aspect, um, 
I'd be happy to have that discussion as part of the wider external lighting to see whether anything can be done in terms of um, mitigating light after, after, after night falls. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Um, Councillor Gallagher, I think you had your hand up. Yep. Thank you, Chair. Uh, reference was made to the uh, business that's operating to the north of uh, the ZX Lider building, which is a horse business. And the, the running across that road, the Blackmore Park Road, is a bridleway, which is uh, I've certainly used back in the 1980s, and it's been very, very busy. Having had discussions with the, the people who run the business, the horse business next door, they've had a number of problems with horses bolting, with cars speeding by. Uh, and because it's running right from one side of the road to the other, the bridleway, there is a, there's the traffic of, of the horses trying to get across the road with vehicles running up and down. So having these horses having bolted and up unseated the rider, I think is a, is a current problem. But with the increase of the number of people coming onto the Willow End Park site, eventually 130, I think you said, I think some uh, road signs or calming measures need to be put into place so that traffic is actually slowed down in the vicinity of uh, and round about that uh, bridle way so that it makes it safe for riders and people walking in the area as well. So apart from from that condition, which I, I, or that situation, if we can get that resolved, I'm certainly in full support of this development and the ZX line, look forward to the ZX line actually being put in place there, bringing in uh, high tech jobs uh, into an area, highly paid high tech jobs as well, into an area that so very much needs it. So that's my, that's the points I'd like to make. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Um, right, any other members wishing to comment? I can see mm -hmm. Councillor Davis. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> yes, uh, the, clearly there's been a lot of work uh, put into this application. <clears throat> uh, a lot of work by the uh, by the proposer. Um, and, and the architects involved, um, and, and a lot of work by the planning officer, as, as evidenced by the length of the report. Um, thanks for that, Simon. <laughs> uh, I, I was at the site visit um, the other day, and uh, site visits are really good because they actually trigger things that uh, otherwise don't leap out of the pages. Um, I, I'm concerned, as Councillor Bennett is, about the, uh, about the Western uh win western facing windows um and and my view is that uh, that reflective glass doesn't really cut it here uh, i i think it would be easy to achieve uh screening of those um western facing windows so that there was no internal light spill in that direction visible from the hills um and if 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 consideration of that scheme can be built into uh, the arrangement for the local members to uh, to verify the scheme um, then I'm um, I'm in favor of uh, this proceeding although, although I'll be very sad to leave the lose the jobs in Castle Morton that will eventually end up here thank you councillor David um, could I ask um, Simon and maybe Karen uh, to come back um, on both Councillor Gallagher's points and also on Councillor Davis's points. Who wants to start? We've got a, a traffic related question and traffic calming and then we've got uh, Councillor Davis again about um, the windows and light. Who'd like to start? I'm, I'm happy to start, Chairman, if, that, if, you, if you'd like. Thank you, Karen. Uh, evening, everyone. Um, I, I, I note the concern, and I guess that the Bradley Way uh, runs just to, to the north of the site. Um, I would be concerned about putting traffic calming measures 
on the road as a result of this application. I don't believe that they are justified. I think we could certainly look at working with the applicant to provide warning signs of warning signs of uh, of um, horses, but I wouldn't support the inclusion of traffic calming on Blackmoor Road, I'm afraid. Thank you, Karen. Um, Simon, did you want to come back at all? Yeah, yeah thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to point out in, on that particular point, condition 28 as recommended um, states, prior to the building works here by permitted progressing beyond slab level, details of advisory signage to warn motorists of the potential for horse riders crossing Blackmore Park Road at its intersection with the public bridleways to the northwest of the site, and then they're named, uh, shall be submitted to and approved in writing by the LPA. The approved signage shall be erected prior to first use of the development. So, um, uh, in, in, in conjunction uh, with the applicant, we, we have sort of preempted that concern, I guess, and um, hopefully that will address that issue. Um, in terms of Councillor Davis's um, query about the lighting on that western aspect, I, I do fully understand that that is the aspect that faces the hills. Um, and so I'd certainly, again, be happy to, to look at that with the applicant in conjunction with the ward members um, so that that is sort of resolved as part of the external lighting details prior to the grant of any permission. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Um, do I have any other councillors wishing to speak at this point? Just looking through, I can't see any other hands up. Lisa, can you see any other hands up? No, Chair, not at the moment. Thank you, okay. In which case, um, Thank you, everybody. I think that was a really interesting discussion. Um, you've obviously all read the papers in great detail and considered the site in great detail. Um, I'm going to ask Duncan um, if he can try to sum up the proposal as we understand it at the moment. Duncan? Um, Chair. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, both Councillor Morgan and myself asked to, to speak at the end, but but I uh, haven't listened. Councillor, haven't... Councillor Allen, I'm just going to, I'm going to ask Duncan to sum up and then we'll come back to you and Andrea once we've summed up on the proposal yeah, so we know that, what the current proposal is. Yes, yeah, that's fine, apart from I, I may well change the proposal because the members have now raised, raised some questions that, that I'd like to have answered if possible. OK, you can come back and do that, certainly. You want to do that now then? Yeah. If that's OK, but I still would like to speak at the end. OK, that's fine. OK. Yep. Um, well, uh, I think it was Councillor Bennett who mentioned about this uh, patio. I'm not particularly worried about that and I wondered what, what the officer's thoughts were on this patio. Simon? Uh, I, I, I thought I'd address that in terms of sort of clarifying the distance of 65 metres um, from the built part of the development to the residential garden of that property. It, it, that's well in excess of what we would expect in terms of um, a residential design guide for, for overlooking. Okay. Yeah, I understand now. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, and then we, we've talked about the west, westerly glass. Uh, we're going to put that in uh, as a condition to be agreed with the ward members. That's fine. Um, the all li the, the, the living roof, it was suggested that this was extended on the westerly uh, facing uh, roof. Is that possible or is that not something we can ask for? Simon? Um. I think in, in terms of my view, my view on it, um, it, 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 it sometimes is desirable to have a, a, a sort of a broken roof scape so you have different materials so that it doesn't appear as one thing. And I appreciate the point that a, a, a grass roof might blend in with the rural landscape. Um, my view is the building is acceptable as proposed, but if members feel um, so inclined, you know, we could seek to, to look at that um, in conjunction with the ward members again. Yes, yes, I, I, I think that's probably going to be a condition I'll make in a minute if, I, if Councillor Morgan agrees. Um, uh, then uh, it was also mentioned, uh, are the solar panels non-reflective? Do we know that or can we make that a condition? Yeah, the, 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 there is a condition which deals with solar panels and it does make reference to non-reflective um, or certainly approval of the type of panels which should be non-reflective and not have the... Um, Sort of aluminium framed um, parts of them, which would obviously uh, cause more glare. So we have got control in that respect already. Okay, so I can remove that. So there's only two it to it, and there's a couple of other things. The the um, timber facing uh, on the westerly side appears in the picture to be orange. I take it that's going to fade in time. Is it? Is it expected to fade? 
because if it's a bright orange, that's going to be awful looking down from the hills. Yeah, we, we, we've got a condition which requires, um, they've already done an environmental colour assessment, but what we want to see uh, will be sort of detailed samples of materials having regard to that assessment and um, using the national uh, natural colour system rather to, to make sure we've got very precise details of colours of all the, all the materials. So, so there is control over that. Right, okay, that, that, that's great, thank you. I'll, thank you for that, Chair. I'll uh, sum up at the end, if I may, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Um, Councillor Morgan, do you want to add anything at that point before I ask Duncan to... No, I just, I just am in agreement with uh, Councillor Allen. We did speak about this previously, and it's, it's, it's worked out that what we were speaking about has been mentioned by other members, so that, that's good. Um, the only other thing uh, that's come out of it was the fact of having windows that are tinted or maybe blinds, which I think they offered for the other windows. So I think that could be a, a which is now going to be a part anyway. So yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll come back to you as well at the end. Yes, um, please, if you would. Thank you. Um, Duncan, could I turn to you now and ask you if you could try to sum up what was quite a complicated and detailed debate? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. If I may, there was just one point that um, I did want to pick up on first. Um, at the beginning of the debate, um, quite understandably, Councillor Allen referred to the South Worcestershire Development Plan review. Mm. And um, we can't reasonably expect members to pretend that they don't know what is emerging as part of the SWDP review. But um, it won't be the first time that members have been advised that the review shouldn't be given any weight at this stage and we just need to be very careful and I'm sure it wasn't Councillor Allen's intention but we need to make sure that there's no misunderstanding or perception that any decision this evening has given any meaningful weight to the review and what policy might emerge in the future. Um, so that, that was just the first point I wanted to, to make. Um, we don't know yet what land might come forward as future allocations um, but we have to make a decision on this application at, at the current time. Um, as far as summarising uh, the decision or the, the motion that's on the table at the moment is concerned, um, I have to say I'm, I'm struggling slightly, but my understanding at the moment, and I'm sure Councillor Allen will be able to clarify uh, this for us in a moment, um, I think the resolution is to delegate to the Director of Planning and Infrastructure in consultation with the local ward members to grant planning permission with the conditions that have been published, but also subject to, and this is the bit that I think it'd be helpful if Councillor Allen could just clarify and so we're all clear on. I think at the moment that it certainly includes um, details of the glazing to ensure, ensure that as far as possible that's non-reflective. Um, the external lighting um, to ensure that wherever possible that's low level and has the minimal environmental impact possible. Um, that where possible um, that that's on movement sensors. I think that's a point that Councillor Rain picked up on. Um, that before any decision is issued, we have details of the bin store, air conditioning, and any other small ancillary buildings. And that Councillor Allen also meant, made mention of an external pathway from the, uh, basically linking up the car parks and leading to the uh, Suds Pond. But I'm, I'm sure he can articulate that better than I can. Um, I'm, not, I'm not aware of anything else um, but hopefully that's a useful summary at this stage. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Duncan. I think it was to the allotment, uh, if, if I remember rightly, but you, you might have got it better than I did. Um, OK, so I will go back to Councillor Allen now. Uh, Councillor Allen? Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, right, yes. Uh, uh, Duncan's quite right in what he said. Um, the only other two things was this rear path, and this is from what I would call the easterly rear car park. There's a short gap from there leading to this um, rather nice path near the Suds Pound, I, I, and it's 
obvious to me that if you park there and you're wanting to go to the allotments or possibly into the building, you're going to just naturally walk straight across to get onto that path uh, and, and then follow a nice route through the orchard, uh, either to the allotments or, or to your place of employment. It, it just makes perfect sense to, to extend that footpath. So I'd like to make that a condition. Um, the other condition was for us to, to, uh, to investigate extending the living mm -hmm. roof so it covers all of the Westernly uh, roofs. I think Thank that's you. it. We've got it all. So there's quite a few there, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Allen. Duncan, did you want to um, come back on any of that before I turn to Councillor Morgan? Yes, please, Chairman. Um, sorry, just very briefly. Um, I think as far as the lighting is concerned, um, we do have recommended condition 16 already. And I think what we're actually looking to do is to amend that just to include a little bit more detail to capture what uh, Councillor Allen and others are seeking. Um, Councillor Allen, um, looking at this from the applicant's perspective, um, they go through a process where they negotiate lots of detail with, with us as officers, and then we present the application to committee and we're all familiar with that process. Um, when an application comes to committee, the applicant is put at a slight um, disadvantage or in a difficult position in that, members will raise design issues that the applicant hasn't had the opportunity to really consider in detail and decide whether they're actually in a position to agree to it or not. So um, changing the format of the roof is quite a significant change. It could be that the applicant is perfectly happy to make those changes, but if that becomes a specific part of the committee resolution and for some genuine reason the applicant isn't able to agree it, there would be no alternative but to bring the application back to committee. Now, committee might decide that that's what it wants. Alternatively, it might be something that you want officers and ward members to go away and explore with the applicant. Um, and the reason I use the word explore is that we can then have that discussion. Um, the point about delegation to the Director of Planning and Infrastructure is that within reason and, and, and officers and ward members acting reasonably as we would, if we can't reach agreement on something, the applicant, sorry, the application comes back to committee anyway. So that's, that's the, the safety net for want of a better expression. Um, but I think we should put those sorts of changes to the applicant and give them an opportunity to consider it and, and advise us because um, it's important to appreciate that we don't have a planning policy that says for this type of development in this location, roofs must be green roofs. Um, we do have advice and Simon's already mentioned the environmental color assessment and arguably, um, a metal roof of the right colour, informed by the environmental colour assessment that the AOMB partnership has published, could be just as environmentally ac acceptable as a green roof. Um, and it's just important that we don't, dare I say it, fall into the trap of requiring something that our policy doesn't actually require. I hope that's helpful. Thank you, Chairman. Right. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Allen. You want to say words? Yes. More? Um, so, so if I understand you correctly, Duncan, and I may have this wrong, um, that that we can we can put it uh, as a a detail to be agreed with the applicant, uh, the officers, and the two ward members, uh, and as long as we're all happy, it can go ahead. And if we're not, we can bring it back to committee. Is that what you're telling me? So, Councillor Allen, I'd suggest the wording is that um, officers and ward members explore the potential to increase the amount of green roof. OK, so so do we make that a, a condition, a part of my summing up? Um, I, sorry to be really <laughs> pedantic on this. Um, uh, sorry. 
I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to refer to it as a condition because okay. that's something very specific. But as an element of the committee resolution, yes. Element um, of the resolution. I hope somebody's writing all this down because <laughs> not, okay. As I we, usually rely on Duncan to write it all okay. down, so I'm hoping he has. I, I think I think we need to 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 it, it, unless Andrea's got uh, something else she wants to say, is that I try and sum up with perhaps with a bit of help so we get all these bits that I've added uh, on down in a logical format and then perhaps we vote on it, unless, of course, you want to let Council Nielsen in who, who, who appears to want to say something now. Just bear with me for one minute, Martin, because I was going to ask, I was going to ask Duncan to sum up before we actually um, in conclude and, and go to the vote and come back to you mm -hmm. and Andrea. So, Duncan... I'm just going to ask you, are you in a position, I'll come to Council Nielsen in a minute, are you in a position mm -hmm. at the moment where you would be able to um, sum up, yes, not Jeff. just at the minute because I'll go back to Councillor Nielsen, but are you comfortable to be able to sum up when I come to you? Yeah, brilliant. Yes, Thank Jeff. you. Thank you. It's quite a lot to take in. I appreciate that. Um, okay. Councillor Nielsen? Yes, thank you very much indeed, uh, Chair. Um, I, I'm, I'm very pleased to have heard uh, the um, comments by Duncan in particular regarding the exploration of the extension of the living roof because uh, I did have a question um, actually in terms of the cost of installation of a living roof compared to the cost of installation of the roof otherwise proposed. Um, it did uh, sort of occur to me that um, this is a, a, a very unusual planning um, application, as everybody has commented on. Um, I do think the applicants have attempted to uh, accommodate the concerns that members, the local ward members, have articulated and indeed other members at this meeting. And it would concern me greatly that we became overly onerous in our uh, conditions that we uh, um, suggest as a result of this meeting when we are uh, when such a, a an exceptional application is being put to us in terms of job creation at such a very challenging time as we emerge out of COVID for our economy and I do think the balance between the economic uh, considerations and the environmental considerations is very important and I have not heard any discussion about the additional cost that is suggested through this conversation that is to be explored. And I wondered if anybody knew anything further or could give us, enlighten us a bit as to how much we're suggesting uh, the applicants should have to carry. Thank you. Um, I will go back to Duncan. I, uh, I think um, Duncan's probably come up with the, the right sort of wording, which is about exploring. Um, which I would hope would include things like cost. But Duncan, um, I'll, I'll turn to you again, please. Thank you, Chairman. I think because um, the mood of the committee seems generally to be supportive of the principle and much of the detail, it does seem appropriate to um, resolve to, to delegate uh, subject to a number of um, items. So. Um, I am going to try and attempt to, to summarise where I think uh, we've got to. Um, so the, the motion uh, would be to delegate to the Director of Planning and Infrastructure in consultation with the local ward members to grant planning permission with conditions as published, but also with the following. Um, an amendment to condition number 16 in respect of lighting um, to pick up on external lighting, but also the potential impact of internal lighting, which would spill out from the building um, to uh, resolve the issue as far as the um, glazing specification, particularly the westerly mm -hmm. elevation to require details of the bin store, air conditioning uh, and ancillary structures. Um, the detail relating to the external pathway and that all important word to explore with the applicant, the potential to increase the area of green roof. Chairman, I, I hope I've captured everything, but. I'm hoping at this point that Councillor Allen will, uh, will will say say so or otherwise. 
I, 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 I'm delighted. Thank you. Sorry, can I just, um, Councillor Allen, just before you do that, can I just check? Councillor Davis, have you got a hand up or was that a thumb? A thumb, thank you, thank you. Councillor Allen, thank okay, you. Okay, th thank you very much. Well, thank you, everybody. I think that's been uh, really helpful. I think it, we, we've uh, really achieved a lot tonight. So I, I think uh, with, with those proposals from Duncan, uh, let's put it to a vote, please, if Andrew's in agreement. Okay, Councillor Morgan. Yes, all, heart all heartedly. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thank you, Duncan, for those really lovely words that we were trying to conjure up but couldn't find. So thank you, and I'm in full agreement with what you've just said. And I, it'll be a pleasure to work with you to get this to be out and building. Thank you very much. The sooner it's there, the better, as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I'm minded, as everybody else is, I think, to have this enterprise and it'll be such a success for us, for the employment and for the education people, for them to have their jobs. I think it's fantastic. And the cycle path, if that materialises, it'll be absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Um, likewise, I'd like to thank the officers at this point for managing to pull all that together. Um, and it was a very good debate, councillors. So thank you very much. OK, um, we'll move to the vote. Um, and if I could ask Penny to call out the members' names in alphabetical order as normal. And if you can respond in the usual way, yes, no, abstain. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Evening, Councillors. Yeah, if you would, after I've called out your name, just state very clearly whether you're voting for, against or abstaining. Councillor Axa. For. Councillor Allen. For. Councillor Baldwin. For. Councillor Bennett. For. Councillor Bovey. For. Councillor Davis. For. Councillor Died. For. Councillor Yallaha. For. Councillor Mills. For. Councillor Morgan. For. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Neil. <laughs> Four. Councillor Palmer. Four. Councillor Rain. Four. Councillor Reed. Four. Councillor Whitehead. Four. And Councillor Wood. Four. Thank you. Chair, the proposal to um, delegate the decision is unanimous. Thank you, Penny, and thank you, everybody. That was a really good debate. Thank you particularly to the officers, um, to Duncan for his summing up, for Simon for his patience to keep answering, and for Kieran for working the, the, uh, the presentation, all very helpful, and to Karen, who joined us as well. So thank you, everybody. Have a good evening, and uh, you see you soon. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you.